Elizabeth's story is one of power and a lot of resilience, as you have had her, as you had her on the first part, uh, first episode that we aired. And today we are continuing with her story on how has life been and how did she manage to come out and take charge of her own story, on her narrative, and just to live a life beyond what happened to her. So thank you so much again, Liz. Thank you. And um, of course, my first question is, how did you manage to come out? Because a lot of uh, SGBV survivors live in the shame and stigma of society, and they do not come out easily and say, this happened to me. Mm -hmm. So how did you manage to come out? Um, like I mentioned previously that uh, I sat down mm -hmm. and I was thinking to myself, like now what is going to happen? Mm -hmm. If I cross the line and uh, come out and say, look guys, I, when you come out, you come out not to your family. Mm -hmm. When you come out, you just don't come out to your friends. You just don't come out to your community. You come out to the world. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Someone might look at this video, if it is on YouTube, in the US, in Netherlands, yeah. in, in Nigeria, in South Africa, you know? Yeah. So when you come out, like, I, 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 I asked myself this question, if really that is what I wanted, because I knew coming out was inviting some was inviting the world to your world to your reality. you know yeah. and and it was to come with its negative part yeah discrimination being looked down upon mm -hmm. being uh, like you 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 you're you just a woman who was abused and you can tell us nothing mm -hmm. you know um people just being wanting to be the bosses in your life mm -hmm. and all the like and I just told myself, look, I am going to come out and I'm going to use it as a therapy for myself. Like I needed to get myself back. I looked at that child and this child is going to be here with me and, and there is nothing I can do about it, you know? Yeah. I wanted to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to accept her mm -hmm. and now how, how was I going to maneuver through all of this madness and and come out victorious mm -hmm. and I came out my first interview I had it with uh, Edith Kimani mm -hmm. then I met a lady my, my current um, director of the organization, mm -hmm. Jacqueline Mchere, mm -hmm. she had started a Grace Agenda. Mm -hmm. And Grace Agenda was um, a community-based organization focusing on women who are going through sexual violence mm -hmm. during the post-electionary period. And I, I, went, I, I just started sharing my story from platform to platform to platform to platform. Mm -hmm. And there, I am up to now, and it really helped me. You know, back back then, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it and talk about it uh, without getting so emotional mm -hmm. and not even being able to finish it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm able to do that. I, I, I wouldn't have done it in a more professional way. Like I would just talk, start sharing and I would be shouting and I would be crying and because I was filled with so much rage. Uh, when I go to Grace Agenda, that now is in 2012, mm -hmm. at the end of 2012 and 2013. Mm -hmm. Then I met my husband, we got married and we got another baby. But now it was time for me to work out myself mm -hmm. because Really, so much was still going on, you know, and you, 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 you just want to be a normal person, yeah. and you, you don't want to have any more nightmares. 
you, you don't want to be a bitter person. You just want to be a normal person when you walk in a meeting and you just want to talk like normal people. And I, I had so much work to do, you know? And going in various meetings um, and, and trainings and now learning on how to be an advocate for women who are survivors of sexual violence and um, just um, accepting that, they, look, you know, this is what happened, but it doesn't represent me, mm -hmm. you know? And just wanting to have a space of your own, have, because you, you once upon a time, like I just tell myself I was so naive, but now I'm in the know, like I was spirit, I was in the spirit of not knowing anything, you know? And, and now I have walked through this journey and I have this experience and just wanting to stand for myself and to speak for myself and letting no one tell my story and, uh, and just being that woman who is ready like to fight for what is hers, you know, and like not letting anyone to come manipulate me or taking advantage of me. And all this lesson came with time. Like um, when, you, like my, 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 my director is an advocate, is a very big advocate of women who have gone through sexual violence mm -hmm. and just getting that dignity and asking for dignity for women who are survivors of sexual violence and having women to advocate for themselves. Like we believe, and I believe that uh, a woman who is a survivor of sexual violence, she's the only person who can tell her story and rewrite her story and write it again, all over again, over and over again. Having that spirit of self-agency in you, of when, when I say self-agency is that you can represent yourself on any level, whether it is local, national, international, being given that strength being given that tool to do it. And that is what Grace Agenda gave me. Yeah. Because it gave me so many platforms, so many opportunities to go to trainings. And I have been able to meet with very, I can't say very big people in, in the world of, of human rights, you know, from the United Nations, you know. And it's an opportunity that these are opportunities that I don't take for granted because uh, these, I look at them and they keep me going, speaking for other women. Mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to do a presentation mm -hmm. before the BBI panel whereby when they came and we were talking about, and I was, we were at my organization, we were asking questions. Mm -hmm. What about women who are survivors of sexual violence? Yeah. The state, does it have something to compensate? Does they have a remedy for these women? Because these are women who have gone through so much. And over the years, I've learned so much. And I am here, and I can say I was there, yes, but I don't give it an opportunity to define who I am. Like, it's something, everyone has got a past, it's my past. Mm -hmm. It was really bad, you know, in, in, in one of the way uh, survivors of sexual violence they, when they go through rape, they get what they call coping mechanism. Yeah. And my coping mechanism was drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And I look at myself and I'm like, I sometimes don't know how I made it. Yeah. But I am here now. I reconciled with my child. Mm -hmm. I got another baby. Mm -hmm. I got a husband. Yeah. And life is going on. I might not be where I really want, want to, to be, yeah. but I am not where I used to be. And I, I actually uh, celebrate your story because you have come from a place where there was zero support yeah. to a place where you elevated yourself. Like you were your support. You went through the darkness, came out to the light from a very young age. And uh, as a country that is already going through a lot when it comes to um, teen pregnancies, how many teenagers are going through the same thing? Like, mm. 
you know they, they have to deal with a child, like they're a child themselves and they have to deal with a new child. They have to deal with their family, they have to deal with the postpartum depression, and there are not enough mechanisms, mm. I can say, mm. currently in our country to support these young moms, mm. to support them through the system, through their communities, through the stigma even. And you have really managed to do that. And um, when you told me earlier that young girls look at you and they say they want to be like you, honestly speaking, I, I, I do agree with them. Because a lot of the things mm. that you've gone through some people would not have gone through them. Some people would have died of depression. Some people would have had suicidal thoughts and all that. And I want to commend you for being such a strong Thank person, you. such a strong advocate and coming out um, so strongly to champion against these issues. I know we have a long way to go, mm -hmm. but we need just one voice. That one voice gives other voices the chance to say, oh, if Liz has done it, I also can do it. And uh, I want us to and the second part of this particular interview here. And we are coming back for a part three, so continue staying tuned because I know by now you love this story. So stay tuned, we are coming back.